one of the biggest challenges that we see today in these tough economic times is how do we make sure that the investment we're making in information technology actually produce the dividends that the whole promised. The federal government spends today over $70 billion when it comes to information technology projects. Yet, everybody knows that there have been spectacular failures when it comes to information technology investments across the federal government. The perfect example is uh, the two years and $600 million that the Census Bureau spent on going with a handheld device that was supposed to turn around the way that agency operated to the point where the entire 2010 census would be done uh, in a paperless fashion. Yet, because that initiative failed, we've reverted to a paper-based census. And across the board, we've seen system after system uh, reflected in, uh, in changes around requirements, vendors over-promising uh, what technologies are going to be able to do, budgets that uh, have run away in terms of excessive spending. And yet what happened before, if you look at uh, the last couple of decades, in 1994 there was a report that said billions of dollars in IT investments are wasted. And last year there was a list that essentially said over $30 billion of IT projects uh, are in trouble. $30 billion of taxpayer money. That's unacceptable. And all we got was a list uh, that you couldn't really find much more beyond having a list that said these projects are in trouble. What the Obama administration is committed to is laying a new foundation when it comes to transparency, accountability, and responsibility. Especially when we look at how we manage IT investments. To that end, what I'd like to do is introduce you to our initiative um, in terms of the IT dashboard. And what this dashboard is going to allow us to do for the first time, as we democratize data, as we make information available, we go to the golden source of that information. A big part of it is based on the foundation we've already laid around data.gov and the transparency there, where you can find everything on every aspect of government operations from toxic waste release data to flight information from the FAA. And now for the first time what we're unveiling is this dashboard. And what you see here, on a real-time basis, we're going to be providing the American people visibility into their tax dollars. So you could actually go here and say, well, how much does the Department of Defense spend on information technology projects? How much does the United States Department of Agriculture spend on information technology projects, and what is the health of those projects? The ability to actually go in here and click to the next level and say, well, let me look at the whole portfolio. And not only that, but also providing you with the tools, the ability to tap into the ingenuity of the American people to show us a better way to find the innovative path in terms of how we're making these investments available. We've built into this platform the ability to share how this project is performing, how this portfolio is performing. We've also said, you know, it's not enough to just roll up information and make it available in an abstract fashion. We need to be able to go down to the, the deepest level in terms of data and information and performance for these initiatives. So that you can go here and say, well, let's look at uh, how the Department of Agriculture is actually performing and specifically what's going on with some of these projects that may be in trouble. And actually providing accountability the way it's never existed before, where you can actually see the picture of the CIO who's responsible uh, for the oversight of the projects. <laughs> uh, contact information so you can actually contact the CIO directly, provide feedback to us so we can see what it is that's happening across the board in terms of these investments. Also, providing us the ability to say, well, let's figure out what were the original performance metrics of this initiative, what was promised, and which targets were met, which ones were not met, and are they really monitoring the health of these investments? But going back further and saying, well, who are the prime contractors here? Who's actually doing the work? For the first time, making that visible, to be able to see here that you've got Accenture. <laughs> that's 
six million dollar contract, and how is this performing in terms of uh, the, the the promises that were made when this award was made public? What are we doing in terms of uh, cost? Breaking down the cost, not at a very abstract level, but you could actually see on a monthly basis how is the government spending money month after month, and where are they on planned versus actual expenditures of that initiative? And looking here and saying, well, what about the schedule? How are we performing when it comes to the schedule itself? Are they hitting the targets? Are they not hitting the targets? What were the original plans as far as the initiatives were concerned? And asking you to help us in terms of looking at this initiative and saying, does this really make sense? Is this the right path in terms of the investment that we're making? Uh, or can we find a better, cheaper, faster way of solving some of these problems? At the same time, we wanted to make sure we're also providing you with the ability to take this data and slice and dice it and mash up the information and help us analyze. What we're doing is we're basically saying, help us look at this investment. Now for the first time, the entire country can look at how we're spending money and provide us with feedback. You could come in here and say, how do you get the agency name? What, are, what types of uh, expenditures are happening actually in 08, 09? What's planned in the budget? Uh, and allowing you to actually publish it as an RSS feed, download it as a .csv file. This is the same data that we will be getting. And now you'll have the ability to, to analyze how we're performing. Is the data perfect? No. It, but, but by making this available publicly, a couple of things have already happened. Right when we announced that we were going to launch the dashboard, I, I talked to the CIO council, and we saw the data change overnight. People started iterating and making information available and cleaning it out, knowing that we're putting it out there in the public domain. Uh, we saw when we did open houses uh, for the last month, we've had it for four hours a day, including Saturdays and Sundays. And we've had hundreds of people attend those open houses because they recognize that we require a new foundation in terms of how we're going to manage taxpayer dollars. We also are providing you with the ability to analyze and, and look at comparative analysis in terms of asking the questions, what's happening in terms of expenditures between homeland security and education, and where is this money being spent? Um, so you could spot pattern, patterns, and we could spot patterns, and govern in a way that makes the most sense, and divest from programs for, uh, that haven't produced the dividends we've been looking for for too long, and invest in programs that are producing dividends. And you could actually come in here and analyze it in terms of whether you're looking at uh, infrastructure spending and compare it, and look at where are, we, where are the investments happening, from agency to agency, department to department, and run analysis uh, across multiple vectors and figure out what precisely is going on with the entire IT portfolio. We've also made available, of course, for the public um, Q and A's, but also looking at them from a video perspective, such as asking the question, what is the impact of launching a new agency, like the Department of Homeland Security? and what actually happens when that agency is launched. And making it easy for people to see how we are analyzing some of this information um, and looking at the data to make more intelligent decisions. But that's not enough in terms of just making that information available. What we really need is help from all of you to look at uh, all these investments and to help us find the innovative path. And what you'll notice here, one of the things we did is, we said the CIOs need to go out there and evaluate every single investment uh, when it comes to the performance, when it comes to does it make sense or not, as far as uh, the investment itself or a technology solution product. There are structural challenges, of course, within the federal government, where procurement takes up to 18 months to two years in some cases on these large IT investments. Yet Moore's law holds true, and you've already missed a cycle when it comes to innovation in terms of baking that into the culture of the federal government. But we believe that by democratizing this information, by making this data available, and this data is also available, by the way, on data.gov, what we're doing is we're launching a platform that will allow us to tap into some of the best ideas and the best thinking. 
And also what we've done here is we've actually looked at U.S. spending and we've said, well, how do we look at U.S. spending overall and allow people to search uh, procurements across the federal government in terms of uh, looking at uh, investments that have been made not just in information technology, but the entire United States budget. Making it as simple as saying, well, who's buying doors uh, in the federal government? and allow you to slice and dice that information so you can see where specifically was there no competition. So you can click here and see all the doors that were bought within the federal government that were not competed in terms of the competitive processes. And in which states or which agencies were these doors bought. And allowing you to process this information in a way that makes sense to you and I in our daily lives. Why do we need to continue to abstract the way we present information uh, to the American people? For the first time, making search as easy as possible and allowing people to see how their government is spending money will allow us fundamentally to change how we manage information technology, but more broadly, how we manage government and how we procure assets uh, across the federal government. But it would require everybody. It would require you, it would require us, want to manage better, but for you to help us find the innovative path. And we look forward to iterating. This is version 1.0. We've launched it in beta. And we're going to continue to iterate that more and more. Accessible, driving innovation um, in how, how campaigns run um, and making them fun. And I think what we're asking you to do today is figure out a way to make parsed XML feeds of IT data fun as well. Um, and that's a, that's a big challenge. Um, but Vivek uh, and his team have brought a, a new level of transparency um, to government that wouldn't have been possible without you. And uh, you can't stop now. Um, we are looking to this community, uh, and one of the reasons we launched it here, uh, to be important uh, early adopters of this, um, to really uh, push us um, to uh, develop this platform, um, push yourselves, figure out ways you can use the data um, to create new ways to visualize, match up this data. Uh, think of things that we haven't thought about, because we certainly don't have all the answers. Um, and I think, uh, if I could say a few things about that. Uh, Participation and collaboration are something that's essential to uh, our online program as administration, whether it's um, regulations.gov, which is currently going through a collaborative redesign um, on a website that's how, uh, that, that allows the public to weigh in on federal rulemaking and other actions, whether it's the OSTP Open Gov Initiative, which Beth is going to talk about uh, shortly, uh, whether it's programs we run on the White House site, uh, like Open for Questions or the program we're running right now uh, around healthcare, um, or whether it's surf.gov where we're really trying to figure out how we can make the data about service opportunities um, more accessible so that uh, it's easier for the public to answer the presence called service. This community um, is a critical uh, connector between our work making a government more of a platform, making data more accessible, and the public, because you understand both sides. Uh, you are at the intersection of politics, government, and technology. And uh, moving forward, uh, it's critical that you participate in a conversation with me, with Beth, uh, giving us feedback about how this stuff can, can do better, so that it's something that everybody can take advantage of. Uh, because if we build these things and nobody uses them, 
Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, maybe it has some impact at first, but uh, it, we, this, is the, this is the first step in a long path. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to working with all of you. And that's, that's basically all I have to say, is that uh, this is a really exciting project, but you need to realize that about 90% of, uh, of, of the people in this room, uh, or, or rather, the people in this room represent about 90% of the people, I feel like, who really understand the profound opportunity here. Um, and as we leave this uh, event today, um, it's your task to figure out how you can turn around and carry that out, out to your various communities, whether that's developers, whether that's good government advocates, uh, stakeholders of any type. So thank you, and, and again, round of applause for Bobette. This is a incredible class.